we're back for another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you out here, at the, coming right back at you from the Lakers Fast Break, Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break. It is sincerely appreciated. Well, if Jamie, a.k.a. Admiral Akbar, had set this up as a trap game, the Lakers in the first half kind of looked like they were falling into that trap, especially defensively because they looked like they had been playing a back-to-back. They were kind of look a little gas, a little out of it. No focus on the defensive end as they gave up 70 points to Minnesota in the first half. But in that second half, a little bit more attention to detail. Uh, the offense was really clicking all the way as they – all four quarters. Over 30 over thirty points in all four quarters. Thank you so much, Elton, for the thumbs up. We truly appreciate it. But, yes, four quarters of 30-point-plus offense. Got to love it. And, of course – they pulled away in the second half for a 137 to 121 victory over the Minnesota Timberwolves. And here today to talk about the game is a good man indeed. Wish we had our whole crew together because I thought we were going to go ahead and maybe share some of our NCAA Final Four picks. I know I will today. Maybe the other guys don't have their guts, but, you know, I'm just calling them out. But here today to talk about all the things that went on in today's game. Looking forward to next game, and he'll tell you why, along with me, for Charlotte, why we're looking forward to that game, plus his picks as well. It is Laker Tom. And Laker Tom, again, kind of not really focused on the defensive end. They kind of just said, okay, we'll score, you score, we'll score, we score, because it was 71-70 to at the half. But in that second half, enough defense, not great defense, but enough defense, but mainly they just kept on their gas on the pedal, and the way LeBron was finding Montrezl Harrow was truly fun to watch. Three straight times. Dunk, dunk, dunk. Well, you know, the, the big focus and change that the Lakers made in their offense uh, was really to feature uh, trying to get the ball to Harrell off of pick and rolls. Yeah. Um, and, and sort of reprising what his, you know, he averaged 20 points per game last season and won the fifth, sixth man of the year award with the Clippers primarily because of playing with Lou Williams and, and yeah. Lou just kept setting him up over and over. Well, when AD went out, basically the Lakers re-strategized how they were going to use Harrell and, and it's really worked wonderful. And, and I think that it's, it's, it's given a, a boost to his game. It's added to the, uh, to the number of assists that we've generated. Um, and, and Montrez has responded beautifully. Um, it's great to see him play really well. Um, in fact, the three guys, on, other than, you know, this is the same formula as we used last night. Uh, a beautiful triple-double by LeBron James, including some excellent three-point shooting near the end of the game. Yeah. And three guys coming off of the bench, the the, the bench big three of uh, Montrez, uh, uh, Kyle yeah. Kuzma, and yeah. Taylor Horton Tucker. I mean, they, they scored uh, 37 points tonight. They scored 62 yesterday. The bench scored 70 points. <laughs> More than half the points in the game were scored by the bench. So uh, we saw KCP hit a couple of shots from deep. Uh, that was great to see again. Um, the defense, as you said, allowing both teams to score 70 points in the first half was was pretty much Matador defense. But uh, we clamped down in the second half, only allowed 51 points, uh, came back uh, strong, built up that lead uh held on to it pretty steadily um, and and was a good back-to-back -back situation. The thing that Laker fans just have to remember is these were the dubs, the weakened dubs, and the worst team in the league, the Timberwolves. Um, it will get a little, we'll get a little better test uh, this weekend when we play the Suns again. Um, but uh, we're winning the games that we need to win, and we're winning them the way that we need to win them. So it's a good night for the Lakers, and uh, three in a row now after coming off of the uh, uh, off of the All Star break, and uh, three excellent fourth quarters in all three games to pull away and win. Well, they need to keep the pace up because Utah did have a victory tonight in Boston, so right. they do need to keep the pace up with Phoenix and the Clippers. 
fighting for that second place spot, hoping that Utah might go into a little bit of a skid so that they can, you know, at least be somewhat competitive by the time AD comes back. And that's that's what we're all we're trying to do. We're trying to tread water. We're trying to stay within earshot. We're trying to stay within range two, three games within Utah or whoever's heading the Western Conference at that time when AD comes back. And if we can do that, if we can maintain that, that's really something special right there. And I really think that will send us a good sign out to not only for the Lakers fans out there, but also to the rest of Western Conference that the Lakers do have a very good chance of winning this season. But I'll tell you what, it was a great collective effort. Like you said, bench play strong again for the second time in a row. You had Kuzma with 16, Montrez Harrell, another efficient game, 11 to 16, 25 points. THT, another solid outing, 16 points. When you look at THT, still issues for me on the defensive end. But when it comes to offense, he's really becoming a better scorer and feeling more comfortable day in and day out. Yeah, he made some he made some excellent plays. And, and, and you know, it's really good to see the – continued progress uh, with any young rookie or second year player like uh, Talon. A lot of the times it's, you know, it's two steps forward, three steps back, two yeah. steps, three steps forward, two steps back. Um, but he seems to be working on a, on a sort of a pattern that reminds me of two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back. He continually seems to be getting better and better. The game continually seems to be slowing down to him. Um, I thought this was an excellent game, and and there's a big difference when you're going up against driving into the lane against a rookie like Wiseman last night versus going in against a veteran like uh, like Cat tonight. Um, and I thought he used excellent judgment. He didn't find himself caught. He was under control most of the time. Um, man, that 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 full court bounce pass that he threw to Kuzma on the fast break was one of the best passes I've seen this year from him. I mean, that was. That was really stunning. So um, he struggles a little on defense because he doesn't. He's not really a quick. He's not really a a quick player in the sense of um, of being able to have the footwork to stay in front of a guy. Yeah. Um, and so he's constantly chasing guys around screens. He doesn't have the quickness that Schroeder, for Schroeder, for example, has to sneak in and get in front of the guy in the screens. And he's relying more upon upon his length and his strength. You know, he's at, at, at six foot four, he's the heaviest and the longest armed player in the NBA. Um, and those are the those are the traits that he has to, to really hone on. Um, so he's he's in a perfect situation on a perfect team, the Lakers, where where basically he doesn't have to play. He doesn't have to be an individual stopper and he can contribute on a team basis. And he's doing very well. He ranks, you know, among the top five players in defensive rankings on the Lakers. Yeah. Um, which means that that he's playing good team basketball, team defense basketball, um, whenever he's in there with the combinations of players that he's in there with. Um, and everybody knows that he can make plays. And and the best part about it is just that continued improvement, you know. Um, the Lakers shot 50% from three tonight. They shot yes. very 44% yesterday uh, from three. So um, great signs. Just remember that who we're playing against. These are not the Clippers, the Jazz, or the Nets, um, or the Suns. And we'll find out how we do as we move down the line. I thought it was an interesting stat that uh, Stu brought up uh, that the Lakers defense is still ranked third in the league since AD went down. Um, and that's impressive. And then the other thing tonight that was really impressive to me, and I haven't looked at the actual stats for it, but we played extremely well, and, and a lot of it is through the, the big the big three off of the bench. We played extremely well when LeBron was sitting. And uh, that's been something that has not been a trademark of, of most LeBron teams and definitely not this LeBron James Lakers team. So that's a, a really good sign how well they're playing. Um, probably attributed to the fact that I traded most of those three guys in, in the 10 trades that I put out on Lakerholics.com the other day. Um, ever since I've done that, all three of them have just really responded terrifically. Um, earning earning uh, a lot of uh, raves from Lakers fans and um, hopefully, you know, increasing their attractiveness to the, uh, to the uh, Indiana Pacers uh, as the Lakers are supposedly looking to try to see if they can trade for Miles Turner. 
which is a move that I'm 100% in favor of. Well, uh, uh, Erpsions, hopefully you're getting a chance to get a chance to watch us. We truly appreciate you doing so and cannot thank you enough for joining us and appreciate your comments. Salamat. Uh, thank you again. But I wanted to go ahead and say this is the Lakers Fast Break. We're on every single time after the game. Plus, also, we're available wherever you get your podcast. Laker Tom, uh, again, another triple-double for LeBron. Seems to be old hack as of late. I mean, very efficient the way he's going ahead and with his passing. Little turnovers, but then again, you know, he's high usage. You're going to get that. I mean, yesterday he was a little bit more careless with the ball. Yesterday he looked like he was going through the motions. Today it looked like he had to work a little harder just to get through, and not necessarily because anything was tough that, that Minnesota threw at him. It just seemed like he had to work a little bit harder because it was a back-to-back. -back. Yeah, I think so. You know, I mean, hey, the man's 36 years old. Oh, right? I know, and, it, and sometimes it shows, as we've said. Yeah, it, sometimes it shows, but more often than not, it's unbelievable how much speed he generates and, and how athletic he still is at 36 years old. Um I, I think that our friend Rafael Barlow is right. You know, he's bionic. He's the $6 million man, you know, this, uh, in, in the, the cyborg. Center. Yeah. But, so, but uh, yeah, you have to, you have to love it. The, the other thing too, is that the Lakers are back to having fun. You know, the whole team was having a great time tonight, even though it was a back-to-back -back game. And uh, uh, you know, it's, those are, those are one of the things that I think you can really take the temperature of the team. If you find and look at the bench, you can see what kind of game, what kind of mindset the Lakers have when they're playing by just the activity and support that the bench players are are giving out. Um, it's kind of interesting. I know that it was a quote from uh, Jared Dudley. He decided uh, th this is this is uh, my best fifteenth man in the NBA. Of course, uh, Jared decided basically that he's not going to have the operation. Um, and he acknowledged that uh, his benefit to the team at this point in his career is on the bench. It's not in the games. And so he might as well hold off and, and let it heal by himself and, and be able to be there to support the team on the bench. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that uh, he made that decision. Um, and every one of the Laker players, including LeBron James, uh, fully believes 100% that Jared Dudley is the NBA's best 15th man. You know, I agree with you when you say let's not be let's not read too much in the tea leaves when you play Minnesota and Golden State back to back. Golden State really uh, inept at times defensively. In fact, uh, you know they did beat Utah the other day, but they had to give up 119 points in doing so. If their offense had to really be on point to go ahead and do that, so I don't want to take too much away from both these games. But it's nice; I will take it. But you do have to, have to be concerned going forwards that the Lakers with their streaky shooting, can go awry real quick. I threw you that, that trade. I don't know what you thought about it on Twitter. I sent it to you, DM, uh, basically trying to go ahead and see if we can pry Rashawn Holmes and uh, uh, Bielitsa, uh, who's a 41% three-point shooter. Uh, I mean, you wouldn't have for guards, as far as I know, you because you're looking for a little bit of backboard yeah, help. But, for, but both for KCP and a pick, I didn't think that was too bad. I mean – your trade mba.com which you recommended said it gives the lakers 18 extra wins yeah you know it's kind of funny about the uh, the ratings in the trade nba one of one of the problems i had as i when i set my rules for putting up my 10 trades i wanted to make sure that all of the trades were let's say that nobody had a bigger advantage than three games three wins as a result of the trade well one of the oddities and and it must be according to how they're running their stats whether they're using per or how they're rating different players so that they can evaluate trade. Um, but Wesley, they, they just love Wesley Matthews. I mean, if every time I tried to trade Wesley Matthews, it gave the other team like 15, 18, 20, 20 extra wins. And it was just hilarious. You know, I could put Alex Caruso in there and come down to three. I put Wesley in there and jump up to 15. Um, you know, the thing that I was trying to do with most of those trades really is not necessarily bringing in a higher percentage shooting three-point shooters because our problem is But he is a volume. He is a volume our, shooter. Yeah, yeah. Our, I, I like Bielicia. I think Bielicia would be a good addition. Um, and then you have Holmes who's playing right now extremely well. 
double doubles and block shots. The other thing too about Holmes is that he has range. He can shoot a three. But he's also he's also a smaller six ten. So he, yeah, but he's more he's more of the Montrez Harrell type of offensive player. He has that. But little he can switch. He it, can switch. I, I still see the volume three point shooters are the ones that you want. You want the guys. I mean, you go up against the the Nets. They got two guys. You know, in in Irving and uh, in Irving and Harden who shoot eleven threes a game. I mean, it's. I'm just saying. I'm it's, just saying. It's really it's difficult. difficult. If you were to ask, you know, for KCP and a second rounder, and you know, and that's all I was offering you, and you know, you get Bielitsa, and also as well, you get Rashawn Holmes, who both are on one year contracts, who mm -hmm. both are uh, going to be free agents, and that money's going to come back to you. If, or if you want to keep them, go for try and see if you can keep them. But they're playing really well for Sacramento on a team that's not doing very well. So I'm just saying in case you cannot get Turner because Turner, that's going to be a hard deal. And a lot of people really want to go ahead and get him. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, I think that the thing about Turner is that he's an unusual player because there aren't many rim protectors and long three point shooters in the league. Um, Cats, one of them, uh, Embiid's another, but it's a really rare to have a modern two way center. Um, and, the problem that the the problem that the Pacers have is that it's just not a good fit with two playing along with Sabonis. The numbers with Sabonis, and this is the reason why I, I'm sure that the article in the Indy uh, Indi Indiana newspaper that triggered this whole thing was a release by was released by the front office of the Pacers, who basically are trying to create a lot of interest so that they can hopefully walk away with a great deal for. Uh, for uh, Miles Turner, um, and it's because that he he and Sabonis don't play well together. They they're continuing to have a negative net differential, and it's grown every single month from December. They played the two or three games in December, and they had a great start to the season. And everybody was talking about how the new head coach was able to finally solve this problem of how to get the two six eleven two hundred and fifty pound guys uh, who both are really natural centers playing together. Um, and it hasn't worked out. And so they obviously are going to move Turner. And the question is, who's going to make the best offer? Because uh, the Clippers are interested in it. The, the Pelicans are apparently interested in the Knicks and the Lakers. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, I was really thrilled to finally see that that it became public, that that the situation was that he was going to be possibly traded. And I don't think that they're going to trade him unless they have a good situation. But if you were to, you know, Harold, Harold, Harold Kuzma and THT is one heck of an offer for them for Turner. Because if you take that and you add those three guys plus Warren and and just coming back from injury, injury now, um, the guy that they got from uh, uh, from Brooklyn, Karis Levert. Levert uh, Add those to add those to Brogdon and and Sabonis and and uh, McConnell and and uh, the guys that they've got. They could be a top four team in the East, and they're not going to be looking for draft picks and so forth because they're not a rebuilding situation. They're a situation where they they have they have a great player in in Miles Turner who just doesn't fit along with their franchise player, which is uh, Sabonis. So there's an opportunity here and. I'm in the middle of uh, finishing an article that basically talks about why why this is a move that the Lakers have to make. And a good portion of it is because everybody we're looking at in the buyout market are pretty much the same type of centers in a many ways as JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard. Um, we switched, we traded two guys who were basically could not defend in the type of defense that we played in the playoffs. We traded them for two guys that would give us more offense, but weren't rim protectors at all. And the net result is that our rim protection has really gone down. And let's look at tonight. We At one point, we were running even, even, and we allowed, I think, 65 points or something like that in the paint tonight. Um, we basically won, I think we won by like five or six points, but we allowed a lot of easy points in the paint tonight. Um, and that's not something that we can allow in the playoffs and in the playoffs where you're not going to see 
Andre Drummond or or Hassan Whiteside, Whiteside playing the role that Markeith Morris played last year. But uh, but you can see a guy like Miles Turner who can kill him on the other end and can score down low with lobs and so forth um, and is a little more mobile and definitely more mobile than and able to defend the rim than than Harold than Harold or Gasol are at this point in time. And well, so I guess comes down, you know, we just got an injury. We're, we just got a scare with uh, with Anthony Davis. And I think the last thing we want to do is to go into the playoffs this year with AD playing 50% of the time at the five. I don't think that's the formula for protecting his career um, and for making our defense more dominant. We need a rim protector who can also switch, rotate, and play that aggressive perimeter defense that we have when we really want to go all out and we're doubling and trapping people. Um, and Miles Turner is a guy who can do that and give us the stretch. He's basically what we hoped, at least I think the Lakers hoped, that we would get from Marc Gasol when we signed him. Um, well, I'm, I'm just going to say this. I think that there are better offers out for Turner. I think we'll especially, with, we'll with, especially with the Celtics. It'd have, it have to be an awfully – I mean, when you look at – you look at a couple of things. Look at how look at how well Kuzma played against the Pacers and how uh, PhD played against the Pacers. How they're playing and how he and Harold are playing right now. Um, but if Boston, let's just put it this way: if Boston try, you know, thinks about it, okay, we should have got him in the in the summer. We didn't. We blew it. But I will go from now. They were going for Hayward. They wanted Hayward in that yeah. deal. They didn't want yeah. picks. Well, I know, I know, but they've got that now sweet trade exception of what 25 27 million what does that help what does that help that can fit under your cap that i mean no, they can, that doesn't do anything for them because they still they still indiana wants something back yeah it's i know not but what just, boston can do yeah boston but can, indiana boston can, can dump, take his entire salary for nothing but indiana can dump another salary along with that see i mean okay indiana you want doesn't Turner? have another salary to dump they don't have any bad salaries. No, they don't have any bad salaries left. They traded Oladipo. The other salary that they want to get rid of is Miles Turner's 21, but they want to cash that in. And they don't want to cash it in on draft picks, which is basically really what Boston has mostly to offer. Well, they got it. Well, I don't know, because draft picks are kind of nice. Do you for, think they're going to give him Brown? Well, Indiana's got, got no real chance to go ahead and, and reach high limits here in the playoffs this year. So maybe those draft picks could well, be very I don't know. Levert, Levert coming back will help them a lot. Do you really see them getting into the top four seed? I mean, they're under 500 I think now. if they I think if they got THT, Kuzma, and Harold, they could. Um, who's the fourth team? Who's the, there's the, it's a three-team race. The fourth spot is wide open. Four spot right now is Miami, and they've been on a hot streak. Uh, they're now starting to play somewhat similar to what they yeah, did. It'll, in the it'll be a battle between it'll be a battle between Miami and the Celtics, um, and the Pacers. But and and even if it's not just this year, it well, gives the Pacers them, aren't even the Pacers aren't even in the top eight right now. They're actually no. uh, yeah, so no, but but they're not going to rebuild. They're not going to tear that team apart, and they're not going to give up somebody like uh, like Miles Turner for a bunch of draft picks. Not especially not Celtic draft picks that are going to be middle of the middle of the road. They want players. That was a foolish move by Danny not to to send them Gordon Hayward. That was a trade made in heaven by by a guy who just can't pull the trigger. Well, let's talk about uh, what's coming up for the Lakers here. Okay. Then, if that's the case, that is Charlotte. Uh, I know we're excited to go ahead and see Charlotte because it's the first time we'll actually see yeah. Lamelo Ball face off against the Lakers. And I want to hear your thoughts on that. Plus, you'll, always, you'll also be able to get a look at one of the hottest trade commodities that's out there in Devontae Graham. Yeah, I'm a big Devontae Graham fan, and uh, uh, they have they have a, a terrific set of guards right now. And uh, they're volume three-point shooters. Um, you know, you have to give a lot of credit to Mitch Kupchak for, for what he's done in turning the team around. Um because the moves that they made were really a surprise to everybody, you know, signing Gordon and, and uh, drafting Mello. Um, talk well, about it. Ball a... fell into his lap. Ball fell into his lap. <laughs> yep. He fell into his lap, but, but still when you've got a good starting backcourt already and, and you have a choice to make, and, and he made the right choice, which is basically that, when you have one of the top three or four draft picks, you take the best player regardless of. Well, of it was a three. It was remember it was a three-player draft. 
at right. three player drafts. So, I mean, you, you know, you yep. Wiseman was taken before. And then of course, Anthony Edwards, who looked good, but it looked like he's going to be a great score in this league. Is he going to be something more? I'm not sure yet. I think a lot yeah. of people are still questioning that, but LaMelo ball, we are going to get a taste. I love, of I love LaMelo ball. I, 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 you know, I love Lonzo ball. I love LaMelo ball. Um, yes. I think that LaMelo is going to be better than Lonzo because he's taller, he's bigger. And, uh, uh, and he has, you know, he he's not the defender that Alonzo is, but he's a better shooter and he's maybe a better playmaker. I mean, I've well, he's definitely he, he's he's definitely better going to the rim. I mean, yeah, that's not definitely. that's not hard to do. That's yeah, not and he hits hard. free throws. <laughs> that's, yeah, a that's a big difference. That is a big difference indeed. But, but no, they got an exciting team. I mean, Terry Rozier is playing really well. I mean, you can feel the Celtics thinking about, man, if we had Rozier instead of. Kemba at this point in time, yeah. we might be ahead of the game, you know, wow. um, it, it, you know, it, it, I'm looking forward to, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Charlotte and, you know, it's kind of a funny thing because they're a team that whenever you saw them on the schedule, it was sort of like, that's not a game I'm going to really be excited about. Um, and now they've become my, my league pass favorite team. Every and you're time not the play. only one. You're not yeah. the only one. There's so many uh, people out there. I've heard on podcasts out yeah. there that, is uh, the same as you. They think the same as you that they realize now how good Charlotte can be. They see the potential, yep. whether or not they're going to go ahead and it's going to happen this year as far as them sneaking into a playoff spot. We'll wait and see, but it is going to be Charlotte on Thursday and we'll be here after the game to go ahead and give you all the lowdown on that. But before we head on out, my friend, and you already told everybody out there what paper, what you're working on as far as a new article at Lakerholics.com. We told you in the preface we told you at the beginning and we also see in the description that we will give out our nca final four picks but before we do l rob he said he would go ahead and send out his love and to everyone out there with his picks and i'm going to agree quote from the email that he sent to me at lakers fast break and also lakers fast break at yahoo.com just to let you know so if you have a message for us either Twitter at Lakers Fast Break or Lake, Lakers Fast Break at Yahoo.com. He sent this to me. I'm going to go pretty much chalk. Gonzaga, Illinois, Baylor, and Bama. Zags over Illini in the finals. Although nobody has been able to go undefeated since Indiana's great 1976 squad, I do think that this is the year Mark Few gets his title. And also, by the way, P.S. to Laker Tom, the Spartans over UCLA by six in the playing <laughs> game. Go green. Hmm. I wonder who's uh, rooting for UCLA on the other side there, Laker Tom. Well, uh, on, on the West Regionals, I'm going to go with uh, Gonzaga, uh, without a doubt. Um, and unfortunately, being a UCLA alumnus, I have to go with the Bruins, even though it's a play-in game. Um, and... Uh, Thank God it's not Michigan. At least it's a Michigan state. So, you know, we have a chance. <laughs> well, who's your final four then? Who's your final four? Um, I think it's going to be Michigan. and uh, I think it's going to be Gonzaga, Michigan. Um, I, have I think to, Illinois I just... and Alabama are probably pretty good choices by, uh, okay. the, you know, they're, it's, it's you know, it, I like Baylor too. We'll see what happens. But that's not a final four. That's like a final four and a half. Give me your final four. Okay, I'll, I'll go with the I'll, I'll match with I'll match with Lee, and I'll take Illinois and uh, Alabama. Alabama. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Got you to commit on something. And by the way, thank you again for the thumbs up, Cornelio and Elton. Appreciate it on Facebook. You can always catch us at Lakers Fast Break on Facebook. But I will go ahead and give you my final four because I've already done it on the ESPN Tourney Challenge. And I have Gonzaga winning everything too again. Yeah, I know. You and probably about 9 million other people <laughs> like myself because I do have in my final four Gonzaga, Alabama, Ohio State, and Illinois. It's going pretty much chalk again for me. I think in the environment where they're all in a bubble in Indianapolis and they don't have to travel all over the place, plus uh, you know the, the amount of fans is going to be somewhat muted because of what's going on. I think that it's going to stay pretty much chalk and you won't have those huge Cinderella upsets. I'm thinking anyways, we'll see. We'll see if uh, my picks after the first round are like a dumpster fire, but we'll see. Well, I, yes. I have UCLA going all going up against Gonzaga in, in the West Regional. 
No, no, I have them out, man. <laughs> I have them out pretty much after they they get one they get one win from me, I think, and then that's it. Yeah, they get one win. Actually, no, they they lose against BYU, so they lose against BYU. Uh, they they make it to the play-in game. Uh, I think that they're gonna you know sneak one out over Michigan State. Sorry, El Rob, but then they're gonna lose against BYU. But again, for me, my final four it is Gonzaga, Alabama, Ohio State, and Illinois, and like. To no one's surprise, and to like no one's surprise here in Las Vegas, I'm going to pick Gonzaga to win over Ohio State in the national championship game. They will remain undefeated. They've had only one real test where it's been under double digits all season, so they've made things look pretty easily. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's going to be something to see. I always love NCAA March Madness. Love it, love it, love it. Can't get enough of it. Those first Four days are like heaven for for basketball fans. So we're going to be happy to go ahead and check out all the action there. But, my friend, it's been a great episode. Again, the Lakers did pull away in the second half. I like the offense today. Every single quarter above 30 points. You can't ask for more than that. 137 to 121. Defense, they took a date off. But you know what? As long as we're scoring like that, it's, it's okay by me. LeBron James, triple-double. Great help from the bench. Like to see that going forward. Now the guys get a day off, and then they head, right. like I said, they're going to be heading into the Staples Center to play the Charlotte Hornets on Thursday, and we'll be right here for it. But any last thoughts, my friend, on the way out? Um, only four games left before the trade deadline. Oh, there you go. There you go. We'll wait and see what happens there. There's going to be more. In fact, I'm thinking about doing some extra trade stuff, so maybe we'll go ahead and have an actual extra episode on the side for any trade talk and things of that nature. Plus, obviously, we will mention any of the hot rumors and trades on our regular Laker fa Lakers Fast Break show, so look forward to that. Again, it's Gerald Glassford along with Laker Tom. We truly appreciate you watching and listening, and we will see you after the Charlotte Hornets game right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. <laughs>